Okay, we're here with John Woolfolk, who's a Hereford breeder and beef producer from Tennessee. And we're in Nebraska visiting uh, the uh, operation up here and having a, a great visit touring around. And uh, John also serves uh, as the current president of the Hereford Association. So I wanted to get just a little bit of background first on, on your operation there in Tennessee and the, uh, some of your emphasis in, uh, in Hereford breeding and the things that your customers are looking for. And then maybe talk a little bit about some of the association work. I work with a family operation there in Tennessee. Our, uh, the core of our farm was established in 1865 by my family, and I'm the sixth generation to be uh, in uh, partnership there with my son and my wife and, and the children. Uh, it's uh, been designated as a century farm by our state is because of over 100 years of continuous agricultural production by the same family. There's not a lot of those anymore. They're becoming yeah. fewer and fewer. We're very proud of that fact. We're in the Hereford business, have been for a long time, uh, basically all my life. I've been in, uh, uh, started with a 4-H project like so many people do and had to have a calf to show and got a registered Hereford heifer and uh, we've grown that from uh, from that one effort to 150 registered cows now in our program. My son's there full time, works, takes care of all the daily operations, let me do things like uh, fun trips like this today or come to Nebraska and see how other folks are operating. Uh, we also uh, raise a good bit of a hybrid Bermuda hay there and have a custom hay business where we sell a lot of hay, uh, primarily to horse folks. Uh, not a lot of cattle, but primarily goes out to horse operation, mostly uh, uh, just pleasure horses and some few show horse places. Uh, we are in the edge of the cotton belt. Uh, we can have to grow some cotton and uh, grain on our farm as well. So we kind of have a, somewhat of a typical uh, diversified southeastern farm, I guess. Mm -hmm. What are some of the, uh, the main programs, the main emphasis that uh, you're working on this year with the uh, Hereford Association and, and kind of what you see as some of the, uh, the, the main points uh, as to the future of the Hereford breed? I think the thing we'd have to talk about mostly uh, today, is, since we are in Nebraska on the uh, Hereford Media Tour, it's uh, titled uh, Demand, uh, Data Drive Demand. Uh, the Hereford breed has been a, a very active participant in the last three years in genomics research. Uh, we feel like we're one of the, on the cutting edge and one of the leading uh, associations really in the world in what we're doing uh, with, with genomics research with uh, several of the universities and the USDA. Uh, they're scientists that are really coming up with some fascinating data and it looks like the implications to that uh, to Hereford breeders in uh, the very near future now could be very exciting. Uh, as one of the speakers said this morning, we thought years, uh, just a few years ago, that it was uh, uh, several years in the future, but it looks like it's coming faster than uh, we really ever anticipated, and it's almost here. Uh, in fact, it is here. We're in the process of uh, uh, merging some of that data that's already beginning to come out of the research into our EPDs and try to make those more accurate and more useful to producers. Uh, We'll be able to uh, soon take a hair sample from a baby calf at birth and uh, have to create the same uh, value of genetics with accuracy that we would have on a yearly bull that had offspring. So that's pretty exciting. I think it'll be a valuable tool and something we're proud of as an association. Yeah, and we've been hearing a lot of discussion also about heterosis and just the broad acceptance of the and growing acceptance of the Hereford breed as uh, uh, in crossbreeding programs. Uh, particularly with, with black cattle that uh, producers can really see some benefit and high value for those baldy calves. Oh, that's for sure. That's uh, probably the most rewarding thing that, uh, and within my, term, my four year term on the board has been the, the really a major swing in demand for Hereford genetics. Uh, uh, heterosis has come back to the forefront. It's not a new tool. It's been around and uh, the value of that's been known for years, but it seemed like that our industry across the country has kind of taken a new uh, uh, traction to that. We've got a cow herd that's tremendously black. Uh, they're looking for an outcross and the Herefordshire provides a good opportunity and option for that. So our, the Hereford bull sales and female sales have been extremely strong this past year uh, all across the country, not just in, in various regions. Now you were talking earlier about a visit that you had up in the northeast and uh, experience to go into a retail store and meet some of those urban consumers and, and talk about uh, beef and beef production and particularly the Hereford beef. Uh, it sounded like a pretty interesting visit. Extremely interesting visit. It was my first visit into New York City and uh, a couple of board members did go up uh, on Memorial Day weekend and the invitation of a grocery store there that's now distributing the certified Hereford beef product. 
And uh, that's uh, most people think of an association maybe it's just uh, keeping breed registry and keeping pedigrees, but we're doing a lot more than that in marketing, and which this was a part of. And uh, the uh, reaction of the people up there to the product was very rewarding to us. Uh, uh, they, I think they were surprised uh, at a lot of different things. It was pretty obvious that a lot of people had uh, misconceptions of how beef was uh, grown and how it was produced in the country. And uh, the number one question we got from people, well, is this grass-fed beef? And we uh, explained to them how the beef process normally works, that uh, calves are raised beside their mothers on grass uh, for the biggest part of their life. And then that, uh, when uh, that phrase is over, they are moved into a growing or a feeder lot and uh, fed some grain to kind of enhance it eating experience and get tenderness and flavor in the beef and, and they uh, they understood that a lot better and we had a tremendous response of people buying our beef that was on sale there that day uh, after they visited with us and uh, kind of felt uh, seemed like they just felt better once they had met somebody that's actually growing some beef that they might be eating so that was pretty interesting yeah it sounded like some of the people were surprised not only to meet some actual ranchers, but maybe surprised that there really even was such a thing as a rancher these days. And I think that's true. I think they were taken back that uh, we had uh, taken our time and come all the way to New York City from Wyoming and Kansas and Tennessee just to help uh, educate them really about the product that we were sending them to eat.